Assalamu alaikum and welcome to another lecture on WE434. We have recently finished the topics of DC to DC converters and as I discussed in the last lecture, today we will start a topic of the DC to AC conversion process which is known as the inverter process. In this particular, uh, in this particular module of power electronic lecture series, the emphasis will be on the basic type of inverters and then we will move on to the advanced type of inverters. So in this whole scenario, we will first of all discuss the square wave inverter, then we will discuss the quasi square wave inverter, and thereafter we will move on to the pulse wave modulated inverter uh, in details. So let us start with the basic type of an inverter system, which is known as the square wave inverter. Inverter perform the conversion of power which is DC into an electrical AC power. There are various reasons why we require to have inverters. The first one or the most common one is the use of the renewable energy sources. For instance, we have a photovoltaic panel, right? That generates the electricity in the form of DC and we want to have it in the form of AC because most of the loads that we have in common they are AC in nature. So we require to have some mechanism that converts this DC into AC and for that we may want to have an inverter system. I have just shown it in a single stage system uh, with this particular inverter. Most of the time the solar photovoltaic system whenever it is integrated with the grid or with the AC load it is actually a two stage system. So first we have a DC to DC converter that actually ensures the harnessing of maximum solar power which is available and thereafter we have the inverter system that converts that DC into an AC uh, waveform of the required amplitude and the frequency. This is the first example of using an inverter. So we have this panel that is connected with the with the AC grid or with the AC with the AC load. Then we have as another another example we have the variable speed drives or variable frequency drives. These are commonly known as VFDs. They are also known as the adjustable speed drives or the ASDs. Now we notice that the if we want to control the speed of a motor then we require to have the that ns is equal to 120 f over p this means that to control the speed of a motor this 120 is fixed number of pole is also fixed so how can we control the speed of a motor if we want to over speed a motor or if we want to reduce the speed of a motor one viable solution is to is to have a variable frequency but the offline supply or the utility supply that we get is usually fixed at 50 hertz or a 60 hertz system so one way of having a controlled or a variable frequency is to use a DC to AC inverter. So what we uh, what we apply here is that we have for instance we have this uh, we have this supply we rectify it by supplying it to some uncontrolled or a controlled rectifier. Thereafter we have we have this capacitor available that uh, ensures that there is no ripple or the ripple component is minimum. And thereafter, we we have the power electronic circuit that converts this DC which is available here into into an AC into an AC waveform. And because it is actually a controllable uh, circuit, and therefore we can specify and we can control the frequency as well as the amplitude for uh, most of the inverter uh, inverter schemes that we will study. So this way, by having a variable frequency here, we can actually control the speed of the motor. Inverters are also used where we have the uninterruptible power supplies, which are commonly, which are quite common in the third world countries because of the frequent power outages and the shortage of electricity. They have a battery which is charged by using the available electricity uh, from the utility. And in case there is a shortage or there is a power outage uh, in that particular area, or what they call the power management or, or load shedding, battery is then connected to the household loads through an inverter. So in a nutshell an inverter actually 
is a power electronic is a power electronic device that convert dc to dc to ac but this is just a mere definition what are the ultimate goals of designing an inverter that is we want to have we want not only we want to control or we want to convert the dc into ac we also want to have full control on the output voltage as well as the as well as the frequency so by this we develop the system where the ac voltage and the frequency are fully controllable by means of the power electronic switches that we that we use so let us start with the with the basic of the inverter at pre circuit is the foremost or the starting point of understanding the inverter this is quite a common configuration for power electronic students specifically those students who are interested in playing with the uh, with the robotics development of the ro of the robots and they want to control the speed of a motor for mostly with the dc motors or separate motors h bridge is something which is common for all the power electronic students so we have we have load here right let us say this is point a and this is point b so the voltage v naught or the load voltage is measured uh, from uh, in this particular polarity with this a terminal considering at a higher potential and b at a lower potential we have this equal to vdc there are four switches available here we are still not sure what kind of switches we have to use but let us have a switch symbol for for these uh, for these four you know switches this is s1 this is s2 this is s3 and this is s4 now this is a generic hbri circuit there are various possibilities of the switching and the output through this particular uh, hbri circuit the first possibility is that this s1 and s2 they are turned on at the same time right so if we turn on this s1 and s2 at the same time then the equivalent circuit is this one that we have this point a connected with with this vdc this is the load and this point b is connected with the the ground or with the zero potential so this is point a this is point b what about this s4 and s3 they are open circuit so s3 is off similarly we have we have s4 off and therefore no current can flow through either of these two switches now this load voltage v not is equal to vab is equal to va minus vb and because here we have this dc source connected with this point a therefore point a has a voltage equal to vdc while this point b is connected with the with the ground therefore we have v not equals to vdc so the first combination that we study here is that we can achieve a positive voltage across the load if we turn on the switches s1 and s2 simultaneously the second option is that s3 and s4 are turned on are turned on simultaneously under this circumstances the equal circuit is something like this one but we have we have load here again this is point b this is point a this switch s1 is now open and same is this switch s2 
S3 is shorted, S4 is shorted. We have this VDC available here. This is plus one is V0. Again, this V0 is equal to VAB. That is equal to VA minus VB. This VA here is connected with the, with the ground having a zero potential. While this point B is connected with this VDC and that is equal to zero minus VDC. As a result, we get a negative voltage across the load if we turn on the pair of switches S3 and S4 at the same time. What we have seen is that by turning on the switches S1 and S2, we get a positive output voltage. By turning on the switches S3 and S4, we get a negative output voltage across the load. This means that if we, with some sequence, if we turn on these switches, then we get a bipolar output voltage across a given load. However, let us examine the, the third option. We turn on the switch S1 and S3 simultaneously. Under these circumstances, we have, we have this type of the configuration. This is our configuration. This is off. S4 is off. So is this S2. S2 is off. This is point A and this is point B. And as you see here, uh, this turning on of the switches S1 and S3 actually short circuits the, the load which is connected between the point A and B. Therefore, V0 is equal to VA minus VB. VA is at a potential equals to this VDC and so is the voltage at point B. And therefore, this VDC minus VDC and this gives you 0 volt across the output which is an obvious thing because we are shorting the particular load. The same is the analysis if we turn on the if we turn on the on the switch S2 and S4 simultaneously. In that particular case, although we are shorting the load, it is shorted with the with the negative side, something like this one. This is point A, this is point B, this is VDC, and here we have this V0. So V0 is equal to 0 uh, for this particular case as well. So there is another possible possibility of a voltage level across the load. That is if we turn on and turn off the switches such that we actually short circuit the load. And this is usually turning on the high side switches or the low side switches simultaneously. One thing I would like to mention here that the switches which are connected with this positive rail here. This is a positive rail. Here we have the ground or the negative rail. So if these two switches S1 and S3 are termed as the as the high side switches. These terms high side switches and these two are termed as the as the low side switches. So we you might have uh, studied this particular or heard this particular term while I was uh, discussing the uh, comparison between the buck converter and the boost converter. Because in a buck converter, the switch is connected with the positive uh, side and therefore the gate driver requirement for a buck converter is more sophisticated than that of a boost converter where the gating is, is accomplished with respect to the ground terminal which is the, uh, which is the uh, source of, of a MOSFET or the emitter of an IGBT or a BJT. So uh, for this high side and the low side switches, if we turn them on simultaneously, we effectively short circuit the load and thereby making the output voltage equal to 0 volt. There is another combination of the switching as well which is uh, which is certainly not possible. That is we have we have the switches S1. If we turn on the switch S1 and S4 simultaneously. And we turn on the switch S4 simultaneously. So this is S2. Sorry, this is S3, this is S2, this is S1 and this is S4. Now, if you turn on this switch S1 and S4 simultaneously, it will not do any harm to the load. However, the point here is that it will create a short circuit across this, across this DC, across this DC voltage. And that draws excessive amount of current and it will damage the switches. Therefore, this particular con uh, combination S1 and S4 and as well as this S4 and S3 and S2 uh, 
therefore this combination s1 s4 as well as the s3 and s2 this combination is not allowed in an h free circuit because it creates a dead short circuit across the dc voltage source it is also known as the shoot through shoot through fault in an h bridge circuit in an h bridge circuit right interestingly uh, as far as the terminology is concerned this combination or s1 plus s4 we call it one leg of an h bridge similarly s3 and s2 constitute this one leg so never turn on these switches that are connected in one leg of, a, of an H bridge. So here let us summarize the voltage level which are possible. So turning on the switch S1 plus S4, S1 and S2, it gives us a positive VDC across the load. Turning on the switch S3 and S4 provide us minus VDC. Turning on the switch S1 plus S3 gives us zero volt. Turning on the switch S4 and S2 again provides a zero volt across the load turning on the switches s1 and s4 it creates a dead short circuit across the the vdc and same is the case if we turn on the switches s2 and s3 simultaneously it will create the dead short circuit across the vdc using this particular analogy or using this particular logic we will develop different kind of output that are quite useful in in the industrial application and in the domestic applications let us move on to the topic of the square wave inverter square wave inverter utilizes the the same h bridge such that we turn on the switch S1, S2 and S3 and S4 for a fixed interval where the time during which S1 and S2 are turned on is equal to the time during which the switches S3 and S4 pair is turned on. This is because if this time is not equal then it will create a DC shift in the output voltage. The next thing here is that let us say we have we have a resistive load let us say we have this we have this resistive load available now with this resistive load available the output voltage v naught which is measured in this in this particular polarity this is plus sign this is the negative sign this v naught is equal to plus vdc for a time when we turn on the switch s1 and s2 and it will provide us an output equal to minus vdc when we turn on the switch s3 and s4 for the resistive load things are quite simple such that we have we have the current having exactly the same shape same wave shape this is the this is the load current right so the load current follows the uh, voltage and depending on the amount of the resistance in this particular load the amplitude of the current is uh, is actually supplied by this by this vdc it's quite a simple thing let us analyze this particular square wave inverter for for an inductive load which is most of the times the case for the uh, for the domestic application and as well as in the commercial applications so for this rl series load for this rl series load this is the inverter circuit this is s1 s3 s2 and this is s4 this is l and this is the resistance r and here we have the output voltage across this particular load let us draw the waveforms and let us see how this particular inverter 
actually works and what are the important quantities that are required in analyzing this uh, simple square wave inverter with an RL load. So, we do know that there is a two level DC voltage available at the across the output. One is a positive VDC and then other one is a, is a negative VDC. The current here is, is not like the it is not like the resistive load because we have the inductance available. So, if we turn on this switch S1 and S2, for instance, this is the this is the path of the current that flows whenever we have the S1 and S2 turned on. And if you notice, if I turn on this switch S1 and S2 with S1 plus S2 turned on, the circuit looks like a series RL circuit which is actually a first order circuit. Therefore, the amount of current that flows through through this particular path shall have the transients involved in it and that transients are better understandable if we revert back to this theory that we have studied for the first order RL circuits. So, as far as this uh, current wave shape is concerned, because we have, uh, let us assume that we are operating in a in a uh, in a steady state uh, in a steady state mode. So let me say that before this, at this is time t equal to zero. This particular line, this is at t equal to zero. This particular line at time. So before that, we uh, because the system is working in a steady state operation, so we have a negative cycle uh, before time t equal to zero. So at this negative half cycle, the current was at the at the I minimum or the minimum value, right? Or it will it will then rise and it will reach the maximum value here. And thereafter it will again go back and it will become equal to the to the minimum value. So the amount of current that flows through the load will not be of square shape because of the inherent properties of the RL circuit which is which is actually a low pass filter right so xl is equal to 2 pi fl right this means that xl the wave shape of the current will be filtered out a little bit because of the low pass filter capabilities of of this particular inverter system so we have this particular uh, is a time uh, that the current will be maximum at the end of the positive voltage across the load and thereafter the current will decay and it will it will become i minimum for the next for the next positive half cycle so let us analyze this particular i maximum and i minimum we need to identify what is the value of the i maximum what is the value of the i minimum and for that i will revert back to the theory which is uh, which is related to the solution of first order uh, circuits that we studied in the linear circuit analysis. So, so let us say that for any RL circuit, this is for uh, this is this is the equivalent circuit for for this time period. So, if I want to analyze this particular circuit, I do know that the total current I naught because this is the current that is flowing through through this load. So, this is I naught. It is a sum of the of the force response and the and the natural response, right? So, what is the force response? Force response is the final value at which the current has to settle after the transients are vanished, and that is governed by only this resistive part R and this voltage source VDC. So, that is equal to VDC over R, what about the natural response? We do know that for a, a first order circuit, the natural response contains an exponential term that is equal to A e to the power minus T over minus T over tau, where this tau is actually the, it, it, it is a time constant and for an RL circuit, it is equal to, it is equal to L over R, right? And this A is is uh, is a coefficient the value of which depends on the initial conditions of the circuit. Let us draw uh, the 
because it's a square wave circuit so you see we have two states available one is when we turn on the switch s1 and s3 and s1 and s2 the second one is when we turn on the switch s2 and s4 so if we turn on the switch s3 and s4 let me check it here this is s3 and s4 this is s2 so with this s3 and s4 turned on we have this type of a circuit that will be connected across this across this particular load and this is for t by 2 is less than equal to t is less than equal to is less than equal to t so again using this this same concept here this i naught t during this particular time uh, is equal to minus bdc over r plus b e to the power t minus t by 2 over over tau and this is for the for this but, uh, time period t by 2 to uh, t that is the second half when the negative voltage is applied across this load now this a and b they provide us the general solution so this is the is the general solution of this first order circuit right so if we want to make it a particular solution we need to go through the through the initial conditions and we want to and we need to find out the coefficients a and b once we calculated the value of a and b then this will give us the particular solution for uh, for this particular HBD circuit so a and b depends on the on the initial conditions what is the initial condition for for this s1 and s2 or or for a time bit from 0 to t to t by 2 what is the initial condition here the initial condition in a steady state condition the initial condition for this time period is is this i minimum and the initial condition for the time when we have a minus vdc available across the rl load is this i maximum so we will use these to develop the particular solutions of these two first order equations so i minimum is the initial condition for let us say this is this is my equation number a and this is our equation number b i minimum is the initial condition for a and i max is the is the initial condition for for b right let us evaluate a at t equal to 0 right so at t equal to 0 this i naught t is equal to i naught 0 is equal to vdc over r plus a e to the power 0 and that is equal to that is equal to the i mu right so this gives us the value of the of the coefficient a similarly the coefficient b is evaluated at t equals to t is equal to t by 2 so i naught uh, t by 2 is equal to minus vdc over r plus b again it becomes equal to 0 because here we have this t equals to t by 2 whenever we put this t equal to, to t by 2 this will become equal to 0 so this is equal to the to the maximum current that was uh, flowing in the circuit prior to the switching of these two switches s3 and s4 so we have this uh, we have this a available and this b available such that uh, using this particular thing this a is equal to i minimum minus vdc over r and this gives me b is equal to i maximum plus vdc over r and these two uh, coefficients when we will plug in back into the equation provide us the particular solution of the differential equations that we have uh, derived earlier putting this a putting in a and b the values of 
a and b uh, we get the following expression that i naught t is equal to vdc over r plus i minimum minus vdc over r e to the power minus t over tau and that is for time 0 to t less than equal to less than equal to t by 2 right and we also have another value of i naught t that is equal to minus vdc over r plus i max minus vdc plus vdc over r e to the power minus t minus t by 2 over tau and this is for t by 2 to till the final time when the cycle actually ends these are the value this is the value of the output current that flows whenever we have an inductive plus the resistive load connected in the system now if you notice here the current this current is actually a bidirectional current right so this is actually a bidirectional current and this requires switches with with bidirectional current flowing front flowing capability so the switches that we ultimately required to replace the s1 and up till this s4 those switches must be able to carry or must be able to conduct the current in both the forward direction as well as in the reverse direction now in this particular in this particular circuit let us say this i naught is our equation number equation number d now in this particular equation what is this value of i minimum what is the value of this i maximum this is still unknown so let us try to develop some expression to find out this i minimum and the i maximum So I minimum and I max are unknown in D. To find them, we can we can use either A or B because I minimum because you see at T is equal to T by 2, I max is observed, right? And at T equal to 0, we observe the I minimum. But we also notice one thing that if the time during which this S1 and S2 is turned on is equal to the time during which the switches S3 and S4 are turned on, then we have a symmetry in the waveform such that I maximum is equal to minus i minimum the current shall have a symmetrical shape such that we have the maximum current equal to the negative of the of the minimum current flowing through the uh, through this given circuit and therefore using this very important uh, you know observation we can uh, actually have i t by 2 that is equal to i max that is equal to v dc over r plus a e to the power minus t by 2 over over tau right and that is equal to minus v dc over r plus b e to the power 0 because for for uh, it is a start of the of the negative half cycle and therefore it can be also be written in terms of this b and that gives us that gives us v dc over r plus i minimum minus vdc over r e to the power minus t over over 2 tau so now because this i naught is equal to i0 is equal to i0 at the end of the switching cycle because the current is same at the start and the end of the switching cycle and also we know that this i maximum 
i minimum is equal to minus i maximum therefore if we put the i minimum into 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 this equation then we get at the start of the switching cycle and at the end of switching cycle we have the same current so that is equal to minus i max i minimum is equal to i max so that is equal to minus i max plus vdc over r plus minus i max minus vdc over r into e to the power minus t over t over 2 tau right so this is the this is the maximum current that happens at t by 2 here we have the maximum current you should remember this thing this is the maximum current and we take it on the other side and we combine it with this equation and put it equal to this 0. So now we have this is equal to minus i max into 1 plus e to the power minus t over 2 tau plus vdc over r into 1 minus e to the power minus t over t over 2 tau. So, with this thing in mind, with this thing, this is I max that is equal to minus I minimum and that turned out to be equal to VDC over R into 1 minus e to the power minus T over 2 tau divided by 1 plus e to the power minus T over minus T over 2 tau. And this equation E, and this equation E is very important in choosing the the best or the most feasible semiconductor device for these switches, because the maximum current or the minimum current they both have to flow through these switches. So this equation number D and E, they are they describe the current flowing through an RL load when H bridge is operated as a as a square wave inverter. So this this particular equation this one And this particular equation, this D, this actually provides you the nature of the current flowing through this RL load when we operate this H bridge as a square wave inverter. So let us uh, let us move ahead a little bit and let us see because we have the we have seen that the current is bidirectional therefore we require to have switches which have a tendency to flow the current in both the forward direction as well as in the negative direction so this h bridge can be realized as as follows so we have this is this is vdc here we have for instance we are using the BJTs. Here we also have the also have this BJTs available. So this is the this is the load is connected here. So we want to have if we, because the current is bidirectional, therefore we require to have a composite switch based on an anti parallel connection of a diode with that of this uh, BJT and therefore this whole composite switch the combination of of this diode plus this BJT constitutes the switch S1 similarly we have this whole as switch S2 this is switch S3 and this is switch S4 such that we have we have a load printed here uh, across which the voltage is measured uh, in this particular polarities. 
now let us examine the shape of the current so we have said that this is the output voltage across the load so we have plus vdc here we have minus vdc available here so we have so so if this is the the waveform then we have let us segregate these few so during a time when we have this switches s1 and s2 turn on for this much amount of time we have the d1 and d2 conducting right which is this one this is d1 let us say this is q1 this is d3 this is q3 this is d2 this is q2 this is q4 and this is d4 so d1 and d2 conducts during the time we turn on the switch s1 and s2 and here we have during this particular time we have the switch s1 uh, we have the switch q1 and this q2 turn on so you can see here that the advantage of having a bidirectional current converter is actually essential in realizing the uh, this particular h bridge practically uh, during a time when we have the switch s3 and s4 turned on while the current is still positive so at that particular time the d3 and d4 comes into action and provides the path for the current for the rest of the time we have this q3 and q4 that conducts uh, during the uh, time when the current is also negative while we have a negative voltage across the across the particular output now this we have analyzed this a particular single phase h bridge square wave inverter square wave inverter as uh, by using the uh, we have we have used it by by using the uh, first order circuit scheme however if the load is is complex and we want to find out the impact of the of the harmonics that is present in the system that is not a solution that do not provide us the enough solution for instance if we want to see what are the dominant frequencies that are present in in a square wave output that is not possible by undergoing the first order uh, treatment or treatment of this circuit using the differential equations for that we require to have a fourier series analysis of of the given inverter that is essential so let us start uh, let us have a look on to the on to the fourier series anal analysis So, for this analysis says that the world waveform Vt has harmonic content in it, so as the output current I naught T. So using these equations, RMS currents of each harmonic content which is present in the circuit can be obtained such that the IRMS that is equal to that can also be expressed as where this i n is the amplitude of the of the nth harmonic present in the system and that is given as v n over over z n so using this particular expression we can find out the power absorbed by the load so this p is equal to encompasses all the harmonic content and that is equal to n is equal to 1 to infinity i square n into rms into r right where this rms value is equal to i n divided by the divided by under root 2 the fourier series of square wave contains only the 
only the odd harmonics. So this V naught T is equal to n is only odd up till infinity and we have this 4 VDC over pi over n pi sorry this is n pi this is sin n omega naught t where this omega naught is equal to 2 pi by t or that is equal to 2 pi f and that is in in radian in radian per second. So let us do an example and and see what is the harmonic content uh, present in in a given uh, in a given H free circuit. Okay, so we have suppose that the input voltage or the VDC is equal to 125 volt. The output frequency is set at 60 hertz and therefore the switching of the power electronic switches in an H bridge are operating at a very low 60 hertz frequency. Let us say that resistance is an RL load with R equal to 20 ohm and inductance L equals to 20 milli henry. So let us uh, let us try to find out the harmonic content present in in this uh, in in this inverter scheme by using the Fourier analysis. So for that so for that we require to have this Vn that is equal to 4 Vdc over over n pi. This is this is an expression that will be used since this Vdc is fixed. So let us uh, have a, a generalized expression that is equal to 500 divided by over n pi. And this In is equal to Vn over over Zn, right? So this is Vn over because it's a uh, it's it's R and L load. So if this is R and L load, then the impedance Z is equal to R square plus omega L square. Now because we want to see the impact of the other odd harmonics on the system, therefore that is equal to R square plus n omega L omega L square, where n is the frequency of uh, uh, n is the frequency of the system. So we will analyze it for the for the fundamental frequency, then for the third, then fifth, seventh, and so on. So these are the two important uh, equations that are required to analyze this uh, square wave inverter using the using the Fourier series. Also, uh, because we have this V n and I n available, so this uh, the third expression is the power P n that is equal to I square n R M S into R because only the resistance contributes in the in the power which is uh, which is dissipated in the in the load so let us uh, i will i will draw a given table and then we will uh, we move on so we have the frequency component n he available here this n is 1 3 5 7 9 and we will see shortly why we are not going beyond uh, the 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 ninth harmonic then we have the frequency in hertz available here so because uh, the system is designed for the 60 hertz therefore the fundamental is at 60 hertz then we have at 180 hertz then we have at 300 hertz then we have 420 hertz then we have 540 hertz so up till this we will analyze the harmonic content thereafter we have the the vn voltage so you see that we will use this particular expression 500 divided by n pi so if we if we divide it this 500 by pi it will give us the voltage of the fundamental component and that turns out to be equal to 159.023 volt and for this third harmonic this is 3 so 500 divided by 3 pi will give us 53.05 and then we have i have written it here so let me just uh, just uh, put it here to populate this particular table this is 22.73 and then we have 17. Point Six, eight. The next thing is to find out what is the current which is uh, drawn uh, for that particular harmonic content. We need to find out what is this Zn available. So let us first of all find, uh, find out what is this Zn in ohms. So Zn is R square plus n omega L square. So for n equal to 1 and omega is equal to 2 pi f which is the uh, which is the fundamental frequency is equal to 60 hertz and for L equal to 20 milli henry this Zn comes out to be equal to 21.37 ohm and then for the third harmonic we have 30.19 similarly we have 42.67 for the fifth harmonic and 56.44 for seventh and 70.74 for the 
for the ninth harmonic. So you see that the amplitude of the impedance actually increases as we move on to the higher frequency component in, in this given circuit. Thereafter, we can find out this I n in ampere and that I n is equal to this V n divided by this Z n. So, 159.23 divided by 21.37 gives me 7.45. Here we have 1.75, then we have 0 0.74 and then we have 0 0.402 and you can see that this amplitude of the current for each harmonic content is drastically decreasing as we increase the uh, increase the level of the frequency. So that's why we can move on with the 11th as well, but this will only create a current which is quite minimal compared to the uh, fundamental current which is flowing here, and that's why we uh, a sanity should prevail while choosing the uh, harmonic analysis of the circuit. Usually, it is uh, it is set at something around ninth harmonic or 11th harmonic is enough to analyze this circuit. Now let us say, let us develop this Pn in watt. So the for the fundamental component we have I n square RMS into R and that gives me 555.02 uh, watt for the fundamental component and then we have 30.62. Uh, thereafter we have 5.476, then we have 1.616 and you can see here just for this, this is just 0.576 which is quite a very low value compared to the uh, to the power associated with the fundamental component and therefore you can see here that based on this particular thing we can find out what is the total power which is absorbed by the way or which is delivered to the to the to the output so p is equal to this equal to p n so if we sum up all these uh, together this gives us 593.308 watt this is a total power which is delivered from the dc source to the to this particular load now before we, I have, I, I have also uh, simulated this square wave inverter and I will share the link in the description of this particular video. But before we, uh, we wrap up this particular lecture on a square wave inverter, let us write down the advantages and the disadvantages of the square wave inverter. So for a discussion on the square wave inverter, let us write down the pros and the cons of of this type of an inverter. So the really interesting thing is that requires very simple, very simple control circuit, right? The control circuit is quite simple because square wave inverter has to operate at a fixed frequency. So if you are designing a 50 hertz system or a 60 hertz system, you only need to develop a square waveform that toggles the switches S1, S2, and the pair SC, S4 for equal amount of duration. So, this simple control circuit is required. Number two, because the frequency is fixed and usually set at 50 or 60 hertz, so it is very useful. It is very useful for, for high power applications. where the switches have relatively low turn on and turn off and turn off times right so this is these are the only two advantages of of a square wave inverter we have lot of problems in this square wave inverter of course because it's a basic one the first one is that there is no control on the on the output voltage output voltage is fixed because you turn on the switch s1 and s2 it gives you a voltage equal to the vdc you turn on the switch s3 and s4 it gives you minus vdc so there is virtually no control on the output voltage which are available across the load one way of doing so is to to develop something that gives you a variable DC link. Only a variable DC link can provide you a V naught which is variable. Right? But having this VDC, having this VDC variable requires to have either a DC to DC converters, right? Can be variable by either 
having a DC to DC converter, right, or by a transformer with controllable with controllable turns turn ratio in case of a in case of a rectification right or you can use an ser but again if you apply these solutions it gives or it makes the system multi stage which is not what is desired by the power electronic engineers so we do not have a control on the output voltage this is the fundamental problem here the second problem with this uh, square wave inverter is that the harmonics are present and are and are in the in the low frequency range so what does this means this means that in order to develop a filter to provide a clean output to, to this particular system it requires to have a large filter at the output because that filter has to carry the amount of current and because the frequency is low for instance you want to design a filter that get rid of the third harmonic or the fifth harmonic then the filter frequency has to be on the third multiple of the 50 hertz or the 60 hertz between 150 hertz or 250 hertz for a 50 hertz system this is something that requires bulky filter processes or filter networks at the output these two can be filtered out by using the advanced techniques that we will inshallah study in the next lecture so uh, till the next lecture uh, take care allah hafiz